Strange how vertigo's taken many decades to rise to that sort of almost consensus greatness. Because even in my own estimation, my, in my first viewing of Vertigo, I fell asleep and, um, and thought it was overrated. It's something that's fun to write about, I think. And it is writers that vote on these awards. And then once you've written, once you've thought, or even just the casual viewer, once you've thought about something and discovered yourself in it, then when you're watching it, frankly, you're congratulating yourself a little bit while watching, but also, you're moved a bit more. You actually, it's part of reading great literature as well. Once you find yourself in it and, and discover something in a work of art, it just keeps getting better and better for a number of revisits. And it's just got that quality. I've often thought of Vertigo as the ultimate male gaze movie, but I haven't seen all the movies, so I'm sure there's some out there that are more male gazy and much more creepily so. Well, I, I guess just because in Vertigo, um, the Madeleine Elster we, the viewers, see is an invention, both of, of Gavin Elster and of the Jimmy Stewart character. She doesn't really exist. She's an actress. She's just a projection of someone's desires or of someone's needs. It's not so much a gaze as a projection. Well? I should be back from your face and pinned at the neck. I told her that. I told you that. Well, we tried it. It just didn't seem to suit me. But built into this movie, unlike some other Hitchcock movies, um, there's a, a quite a bit of male self-criticism from the director at least. I think, I think Hitchcock's pretty much aware of just how destructive and nihilistic and uh, mutually annihilating this whole situation is, but how cruel uh, the Jimmy Stewart character is and just how unfair and how unfair this practice is of, of, of looking at women in a certain way.